Donald Trump was fired by 81 million people. So let's be clear about that. And clearly he is having a very difficult time processing that. I want to get the war settled. I know Zelensky very well and I know Putin very well. I have a good relationship and they respect your president. First at 10, it's your voice, your future. No topic was off limits tonight as Vice President Kamala Harris and former President Donald Trump made their pitches to voters in the race for the White House. Thanks for joining us. I'm Rochelle Murcia. And I'm Michael Patterson. It may be their first and possibly only presidential debate. Tonight, former President Trump and Vice President Harris faced off in the battleground state of Pennsylvania. Eyewitness News has team coverage with political experts weighing in on the debate, as well as reaction from local voters who tuned in. But first, we start with Sinclair correspondent Matt Galka, who's in Philadelphia with a wrap-up of tonight's debate. Kamala Harris and Donald Trump finally face-to-face. -face. Harris is trying to still introduce herself to some voters, while Trump wants to hang all of Joe Biden's policies on the vice president. Kamala Harris. Trump and Harris talking about the economy right off the bat. We have inflation like very few people have ever seen before. Donald Trump left us the worst unemployment since the Great Depression. What we have done is clean up Donald Trump's mess. Trump quickly pivoted to the border and crime. They are taking over the towns. They're taking over buildings. These are the people that she and Biden led into our country, and they're destroying our country. The abortion debate also dominated the conversation, with both candidates saying they're the right choice for women's rights in the country. Trump's defenders alleged ABC News and the moderators were only holding Trump accountable. With conservative personality Megyn Kelly posting on X, ABC was fact-checking only Trump and letting Harris lie. Harris was also confronted on flip-flopping. Fracking? She's been against it for 12 years. Uh, defund the police? She's been against that forever. She gave all that stuff up very wrongly, very horribly, and everybody's laughing at it. My values have not changed. That is about lifting people up and not beating people down. And with another transition of power looming, Trump was asked if he had any regrets over January 6th. He denied responsibility and also denied admitting he lost in 2020. It was said, oh, we lost by a whisker. That was said sarcastically. Look, there's so much proof. Donald Trump was fired by 81 million people. So let's be clear about that. And clearly he is having a very difficult time processing that. Both tried to tackle foreign policy, debating how they tackle foreign wars, including Israel and Hamas, as well as Russia and Ukraine. Now both candidates will be heading to 9-11 remembrance events on Wednesday before hitting crucial swing states. Donald Trump will be in Arizona and Las Vegas at the end of the week, and Kamala Harris will go to North Carolina before heading back to Pennsylvania to round out the week. Reporting in Philadelphia, I'm Matt Galka. And we continue our team coverage with Eyewitness News reporter Will Silverstein, who is joined by two political analysts weighing in on tonight's debate. Will. Well, Michael, good to be here. The debate lasting nearly two hours, touching on several issues, and now we're going to break it down in just a few minutes, not those several hours it took to get through that. With me tonight is UC Merced political science professor Nathan Monroe and Sacramento-based political strategist Tim Rosales. Tim, you've worked with Vice President Kamala Harris in the past when she was the San Francisco DA. What did you make of her performance tonight? I think she had a strong performance. I think she delivered the points that she wanted to deliver. Uh, and overall, you know, she she did a good job. And, you know, the key rule in debates is do no harm. And I think that that she she, can, she accomplished that and her campaign accomplished that. Uh, and they they stressed a few things, I think, took President Trump to task uh, on issues like the economy and on foreign policy, two issues that really have been strengths in, in Trump's wheelhouse in other debates. But uh, the Harris campaign really tried to go head on and toe-to-toe and -to -toe with, with President Trump on those issues uh, to try to take them away uh, from him. So uh, I think those were points that kind of scored in her favor. I think Trump certainly had points that scored in his favor. But, you know, all in all, I think she uh, her campaign should be happy that they accomplished what they, they set out to accomplish. And then, Professor, to you, what do you think were some good takeaways there from Trump's performance? And maybe what were some things, too, that he could have approved upon if they have another debate or if this is the last one? Well, I mean, as a political scientist, right, I think about this in terms of, you know, what I think is the only scoreboard that matters, which is you know, how many votes do you get and how do you get votes? Well, you get votes by turning out voters that are going to vote for you, but they might stay home if you don't get them there. And you get votes by changing minds. 
in the current political environment, I'm not so sure that there are a lot of minds to be changed. You know, I mean, we, you know, and so in a sense, we saw the Trump that we've seen every time, um, and and some of the flair, you know, the the, the Springfield, you know, eating cats and dogs, and um, and some of the sort of talking points that we've seen that that I think to an extent seems as though he's getting angrier and getting more off topic. They also might have the effect of of riling up some of the the voters that he thinks maybe you know aren't quite as excited, but he needs to remind them you know why they, they should show up at the polls for him. And so I think you know there are lots of ways to interpret the performance. He certainly seemed like he was policy heavy early and a little more uh, fired up as it went on, but I think it might have been sort of strategic on his part. And really quickly from both of you, and starting with you, Professor, what do you think is the one issue that each candidate should campaign on? Well, I mean, I, I think it's pretty clear to me that that Harris should campaign on the on the abortion issue, right? I mean, she she comes at it very, you know, it's it's a divisive issue. It's one that I think, you know, if you cut it just right, you know, it, probably the majority is is in favor of of a you know sort of a, more of a Roe v. Wade uh, position, and she's able to take it on. I think in a way that Biden wasn't. And then Tim, to you, what about what about for Trump? What's that issue that he needs to tackle heading into the rest of this election cycle? The famous James Carville quote, it's the economy, stupid. I think that voters feel that they are doing worse off now than they did four years ago. And I think President Trump needs to make a really strong case and, and can uh, about the fact that prices today are significantly higher than where they were when he took when uh, the Biden Harris uh, uh uh, administration took office. And that's something that he can talk about. And he needs to tie that to Vice President Harris directly. And thank you both. We're going to be talking about the economy in the next hour over on KBAK CBS at 11 o'clock. But for now, Rochelle, back to you. All right, Will, thank you. Meanwhile, here in Bakersfield, both Republicans and Democrats held watch parties for tonight's debate. Eyewitness News reporter Mary Peronian joins us with reaction from members of the GOP party. Well, Tuesday night was a big and historic one as the first presidential debate kicked off between former President Donald Trump and Vice President Kamala Harris. And as you can see behind me, we're at the Casey Steakhouse where several Republicans gathered to watch how it all went down. <laughs> Approximately 50 people gathered in Bakersfield for the watch party Tuesday night. Local GOP voters had their eyes locked onto the screen, waiting for the answers to each question. Vice President Harris became the newest Democratic candidate after President Biden dropped out of the 2024 race. Many Republicans at the watch party believe that former President Trump was confident enough to score the votes to win the election. Tuesday's debate gave voters from both parties a chance to understand current conditions coming from candidates. Matthew Martin with the current Republican Party's Central Committee says this historical debate can shape the course of the election coming up in November. It's critical. We look at, you know, just everyday, everyday cost of living for all of us in this country, no matter if you're in Pennsylvania, you're in Michigan, you're here in Bakersfield, we're all seeing it and feeling it. And I think the American people deserve answers. I think the contrast between Kamala Harris and, and former President Trump is night and day. We see the cost of food, the cost of living. Across the board, our country was much better off under a Donald Trump presidency. Topics such as abortion, the Israel-Hamas war, the economy, and immigration seem to be the main discussion that Republicans reacted to. I think President Trump is doing really well. Uh, Vice President Harris seems to be pretending that she's not the vice president right now and, and pretending like she's running from the outside, which I thought was likely going into the debate. But I think so far, especially on the foreign policy and economic policy, Trump is winning the debate. Everybody thinks Trump is a mean guy or anything, but he just loves our country. He wants to bring our country back. We just can't keep going on like we have been these last three and a half years. Everybody knows inflation is eating us up. Um, there's just so many things. This country is just going downhill, just like we heard tonight. Reporting from Casey Steakhouse, Mary Peronian, Eyewitness News. Now let's check in with Eyewitness News reporter Leslie Molina with reaction from tonight's Democratic watch party. Well, the difference between this debate and the last debate between Biden and Trump is stark. There's a lot more people at this watch party and they tell me they're feeling a lot more enthusiastic. What Goldman Sachs has said is that Donald Trump's plan would make the economy worse. Mine would strengthen the economy. That's right. 
I think Biden was a wonderful president, but I think it was time to hand that baton, and I think the enthusiasm is amazing. I believe that Kamala is staying on task. The tide seems to be changing for Democrats in Kern County. They think the winner of tonight's debate is Vice President Kamala Harris. I think she's wiping the floor with him. Unlike the last debate with President Biden, they think former President Donald Trump did not do as well this time around. He decided not to answer on most of the questions, even though he probably should have. The economy and reproductive rights were two of the key issues voters said they were on the lookout for. Uh, you know, I liked what uh, Vice President Harris said about fracking. You know, Kern County relies on oil and we need a strong uh, economy. We, of course, feel passionately about women's reproductive health. That's probably top of the list right now. But do they think this debate is enough to sway some voters' minds, especially those who are still undecided or third-party voters? Probably not. Uh, well, it does really change my vote, uh, but, um, uh, you know, it's good to hear the candidates talk. For now, in Bakersfield, Les Molina, Eyewitness News. And this leads us to our question of the day. Will tonight's debate between Kamala Harris and Donald Trump impact your vote in November? As you can see right now, the results are on your screen. So far tonight, 88% say no. The other 12% say yes. You can still weigh in tonight. You can scan the QR code on your screen or go over to our website, bakersfieldnow.com, slash question to answer.